Hello, hello, it's Melina here, long time no see. If you are somebody who has seen my videos previously, you probably were on this channel interested in house sitting, or perhaps, you know, my video with the most views is all about Alaska. And this video today, um, surprise, surprise, I have now moved to Alaska. So lots of things to kind of talk about on this channel. I was on a house sit in January in New York City, and I ended up adopting a shelter dog. This is Cloud right here. I have been wanting to get on here and really do videos for a long time, but with the move, with training the new dog, work, in general, it's just been a little bit crazy. So here I am again, kind of going into some of the latest. Okay, we just got the U-Haul. How do you get in there, Claude? Come right there and see. How are you doing, bud? We've seen six bears, 100,000 deer and elk, and now we've seen a bison. Oh, I'm so nervous, are you nervous? <laughs> what do you think of your first hotel, Cloud? I think you liked it. 11 and a half hours. Oh, he's, got, he's got his bone all ready to go. He's ready. <laughs> we're starting day three and we're in Spearfish, South Dakota. My hair's looking like I'm on a road trip. Good? Yeah. You don't like it driving the mountains, do you? Guess what, buddy? You're moving to the mountains. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a little bit different than um, crossing the Mexican border or something. Oh, it'll be interesting then to cross it here from the U.S. into Canada and then crossing it again from Canada into Alaska. It's like a weird thing. We'll see how it goes. Here we are. We just did the border crossing into Alberta and the first thing we see and Candace, duty free cigarettes, alcohol, perfume, beer, and souvenirs. Huh? Yeah, horse must be around. <laughs> What's what? going on in Canada? What is going on in Canada? So we just went the border crossing and we had this really old thing of pink pepper spray <laughs> that they had to confiscate. It was really funny. Cloud's investigating. I, a good I think they will. I hope. I wonder oh. if they use the coffee machine at all. Look. Ooh. I love it. I know. I'm happy. I did a lot of research about this trip before we actually took it. 
I was really concerned. I had a dog with me. We had our big, well, not big, but little Camry and um, a U-Haul trailer behind it. You hear about Alaska, you hear about people driving to Alaska and you really look at that distance. You know, it's 50 to 70 hours plus based on what part of the states you're driving from or maybe you're driving from Canada, but it's a long haul and you wanna be prepared. I just kind of wanted to show you a little bit of our experience along the way. The Alaska Highway, which is actually called the Alcan, it's really interesting because I thought that it was going to be very similar to some of those really mountainous drives that you get in the Western United States where you look off the side and it's a super big drop off and you're just like, oh my God, oh my God. I guess the biggest issue that we had was through kind of just getting into Alaska from Canada. Hello, Castro. That little little area, it was had a lot of potholes, but other than that, it was pretty good throughout. This is another Alaska addition. This is Castro, and he was a foster fail, but he's such a good boy. Okay, so when is the best time to drive the Alcan through um, Canada into Alaska if you're coming? Technically, it is open year round, which kind of crazy considering the weather um, they get up here. The best time to really drive it is the, are those key summer months whenever this area gets the most sunshine. You don't have to deal with any of that black ice. And something else to be considered is, you know, May up until Labor Day, that's really considered the season up here. So if you travel outside of those times, that's when you really need to be careful about checking what is actually open along the way because there's not as much open. Another really added benefit with driving the Alaskan Highway in the summer versus driving it in the winter is there are so many hours of daylight up here. Some days are 24 hours of daylight, just depending on when you're actually coming. So it's a lot safer. Um, there's so much wildlife along the way though. It's a lot safer to drive when it's sunny out. And you also, I mean, I think that's a part of the charm of really driving it is being able to see all of that wildlife along the way. Something that I found super helpful when planning this trip was looking at Facebook. There are some really good Facebook groups about the conditions of the Alcan. You can see them right here. Um, these were really great to check for people sharing road conditions, sharing anything, experiences they had. I really recommend checking those out. Something else I would definitely recommend, and I think this is true any road trip you go on, make sure you either go to your app map, download the map so you can have it available offline or print, you know, a good old like MapQuest um, set of maps, or if you can read an atlas, I guess bring one of those as well. Just something for those areas that do not have service. I didn't notice a ton of areas that we didn't have service, but I do think it is one of those things that it is better to be safe than sorry. Another concern I think is crossing the border. So I had my dog with me, I had some house plants with me and I had done a lot of research if that was gonna be okay. Um, with my dog, you have to go and get kind of a um, health certificate from your vet. And I think it is within, it's a week within travel that you need to have it or something, but you really wanna wait until the very last minute before you leave to get that health certificate from your vet. And so that way you can just show it at the border, show that your pet is safe to enter Canada and then safe to enter back into the United States. But I didn't know pepper spray is not legal in Canada. Just in general, it is really confusing of what you can and can't bring across the US-Canada border. So just make sure to check it out here. When you're really planning this trip and you're thinking about how much time you need each day to drive to get there in X amount of days, I would try to buffer it a little bit more. I mean, we were actually really eager. Um, we got here a day earlier than we thought we would. And I think it was just because it was with the excitement with me moving and you know wanting to get there. We had this big trailer, we had the dog. But if you're going up on vacation, I would try to buffer at least two days because there felt like a lot of things along the way I wish we could have stopped by, spent more time with, maybe rerouted a little bit, um, just to really get that full experience. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful kind of seeing our journey along the Alaskan highway. If you have any other questions, please drop them in the comments below. Or if you take this trip or have taken this trip and there's anything you'd like to add, I would love to know about that as well. Hop it down in the comments below. Thank you guys.